you don't know how you met me. You hey everyone, welcome to the Late Late Afternoon Show. I'm your host, Nicole Longer. Today we're with Jamie, Pro Jamie Cullen, the uh, program director of, the Mo of Molloy New Media at Molloy College. Hi Jamie, welcome. Hi, Thank you for you? joining us. We just have a few questions about your start about with Molloy College, New Media, and everything in between. Great. Um, so just to start off, where did you go to college? I went to college at Hofstra University for a T, I was a TV major and then I was a cultural studies major and now I'm at Stony Brook University as a PhD in cultural studies. Um, so with that being said, what is your role here at, uh, with New Media at Molloy College? I am the program director of the New Media program, which is kind of redundant, but that <laughs> means that I um, oversee the curriculum and the way that the, the program it develops and how it goes along. We're currently in the process of becoming a BS major, and it will be in, it's currently inside the Digital Humanities and New Media Department. Okay, so um, how did the New Media program start at Molly College? So it started a few years back. I co-wrote the program with Tom Kenny, who I also co-wrote the book with. We'll talk about it in a bit. Um, when we wrote it, we talked about how new media and emergent uh, media could be a communication advancement and how it could be used in an applicable way. So how you could actually use the technologies for social good and emergent good. What is the definition of new media? It's so that's a really good question because it's used, new media is used in different ways in different places. Uh, new media itself, the theory, is actually an academic concept that is a language. It's mm -hmm. a way of communicating with media. Because all media, new media, eventually become media, it's how do we keep it as new media. So the way we look at it is applying theory, which means understanding why people use it, not how they use it, into something that you could make or do or utilize in any way. So you just said you're a television major, so how did you get to start in this field? I know you wrote the book and everything, but where did you guys get this concept from? So the whole thing goes back to applying a lot of what we know of the field to how we teach it. And so my background is in uh, TV producing. So mm -hmm. I was a producer for MTVU, Women's Entertainment, and NJN, uh, which is a PBS channel. And understanding production and storytelling in that way helps us apply that to um, how that's used in digital spaces, like viral videos, memes, and web television. So you just said you went to Hofstra, you're now at Stony Brook, and now you're, and you also teach here at Malloy. What, like, do you have any specific mentors that you've come in contact with, or just everyone, or <laughs> who? I think it's <laughs> very good for everyone to have a mentor, or multiple mentors. I think that if you have <coughs> good mentors or bad mentors, everyone's a good mentor because you learn from them. You learn what's right, what's wrong, and how to apply that to your life. My current mentor is at Emerson College, uh, Paul Mealides. He's a media literacy guy, and he's okay. basically taught me how to understand um, how people interact with media. So he's my uh, main mentor that I work with, but anyone I really meet is a mentor to me. Which one of your past, like, wh wh sorry, which of your past jobs help you with your current position here as a program director and professor at Malloy College? Every single job I've had applies to this job. I mean, it's, I've, to be real honest with you, I've had well over 30 jobs at this point that yeah. range from librarian to TV producer. So it's all over the board. Um, each of those apply in some way to new media because if you could start thinking about how media is being moved, whether through text, visuals, or even through traditional platforms, you can start thinking about how people you're using them in the current, current ways. Being that new media is a new th field and it's also going to constantly be changing from here on out, what advice would you give someone who's trying to enter the field? Be fucking passionate. <laughs> Do epic shit. <laughs> I, and I'm not kidding. I really mean if you don't have a passion or you don't have a focus, you, it's really very hard to do anything. You have mm -hmm. to find something that makes you really want to do it, no matter what that is. And that's, new media isn't really about knowing the technology or a cell phone. It's about knowing you so well that you could apply it to something else. And so without passion, it's not possible. Without yeah. making, it's not possible. So the best advice I could give is beyond the passion, make stuff. Yeah. Make things all the time. Never stop creating. So since new media is now branched off of the communications department, there is also going to be a new building we here in um, Baldwin, what can we expect as students and just the public and everyone else? So we've currently established a new media academy with Baldwin High School, and that means high school students are currently taking new media courses there, but they're also having uh, a new curriculum that's been established for academy base, which is right. like a focus inside of their uh, high school. Beyond that, we've, we can't really talk too much about the buildings we haven't yet signed the lease but the concept is that this new academy would be take place in the Schubert School 
And inside of there would be places for high school students, Malloy College students, and local businesses to have start their startups and have an actual space to be creative around other people. With the new media department like now being its own entity, would you make any new classes hybrid or on-site? And with this building, what, what would be changing? And what would you change? I think classes do well depending on how they're taught and what kind of subject matter there is. So some classes would be hybrid, some would be on location, some would be in the building and here, some would just be here. I think it would be dependent on the subject matter and what we're actually going to teach with that. I think it applies to how it, it's needed. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people could do code from home, some people feel like they need to be guided in class. So it really depends on what the course uh, deals with. You seem like you've had a very wide range of accomplishments, which, and I'm sure there's some that we haven't even heard about. What are your favorite accomplishments for yourself? Um, I've had, yeah, I've, I've had a couple of accomplishments. I think some of the cool things um, are being in my PhD, uh, getting married, being, do, I used to be a dean at Hofstra, uh, the director of, digital media, d director of web and digital media, and then the book I co-wrote with uh, Tom Kenny. So speaking of the book, um, this is the book that you wrote, producing new, new and digital media using the, your guide to the use of the savvy web. I just said that all for all. <laughs> your <laughs> so guide to savvy use of the web. <laughs> tell us a little bit about it. So producing new and digital media is a <coughs> guidebook. It's not a textbook, it's not a book, it's a guidebook, and it's designed as a survey of the field. So new and digital media are a big field. Mm -hmm. What we try to do is do our best to give a very good overview of everything from personal brand, personal promotion, to viral videos, memes, and web television. And this way, young people can gain an understanding of what platforms they're actually using and why they're using it. And more importantly, it could also be for adults, parents who are curious how their young people are doing it. No matter who reads it, you'll at least become somewhat savvier at using the web. Yeah, I know a lot of times in a class where you have us ask our parents about things and they have no idea what goes on and it's just funny to see the comparison of what we know compared to what they know. Yeah. But um, virtual reality is so big right now. Do you think it's beneficial? Yes, no, why? So that's something we, Tom and I didn't really focus on VR in the book. We may have made one or two mentions to it, but it's really the next emergent study is virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. I really do think we're onto something here. I don't personally think VR is the end all. I think virtual reality is a step to getting us to the better technologies like mixed reality. Virtual reality is headset based and all it really means is putting monitors near your face. That's all it is. Mixed reality is taking goggles you could see through and being able to move digital objects in physical space. Mm -hmm. That will have major significant applications in medical fields, it will have it in empathy studies, migration, understanding, journalism, you name it, I think MR will be one of the biggest advancements we'll have. So you think right now virtual reality is too much of a game and a toy for it to be beneficial? Yeah, as of now I think VR is specifically meant for gaming. Uh, immobile technology. You have yeah. to wear it. You can't walk around. It's yeah. disastrous. So having mo immobile isn't really what the way. Think about it. People want to move. Yeah. So virtual reality isn't really the future. Um, so where do you see technology going in the next five to ten years? Like if you look back ten years ago we hardly even had cell phones. What, right. what do you think w is to come in the next ten years? Yeah, it's weird to think that the iPhone was just barely around 10 years ago, yeah. and now we are at a point where we're wearing monitors on our face. Um, I think the next 10 years will be two things. One, they're going to utilize our body more for technologies, so mm -hmm. we're going to be either wearables are going to be the big thing, a lot of technology that will be attached directly to us, and I think MR will take the advanced step of projecting into our eyes rather than seeing in front of us, which they're already developing at this point. Yeah, and by attached to us, you <laughs> don't mean an Apple Watch, you mean actually... Oh no, I mean in you. Yeah, yeah. In, yeah. yes. And I've also <laughs> seen the contact lenses on Facebook that yeah. they're recording. And yeah, they're for real. It's creepy shit. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> Snapchat <laughs> spectacles just came out, so it's, uh, we're going to be wearing them yeah. very soon. <laughs> so with all this advanc advancing technology, do you believe it's possible that we are in a simulation? Aren't we? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> is <laughs> it? I, I mean, the best way to do this is to consider Elon Musk's point of view of this, which is <coughs> if we are in a simulation, we're still all alive. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been turned off. So even if this is a simulation, we're all still active. We have agency and we have the ability to move around in this simulation just as well as any real world could be because we interpret it as the real world. Um, if it is, I mean, it's easy to consider because 20 years ago, or 40 years ago, we were dealing with Pong and now we have literal monitors that could project in our eyes and yeah. insertables. 
It's possible, if you think about it, that in 10 years from now they invent the simulation that we're just simply li living through at this moment to get us to that beginning point of the simulation. It's only something to think about that we could consider. Otherwise, even if it's the real world, and it is the real world, it's still good. We have agency and we have the ability to make changes. I don't like to think about that. I, <laughs> I want to be real and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're real regardless. You're just real in a simulation or real in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Well, <laughs> thank you for joining us today. Um, and thanks everyone for watching. Tune in next episode about where I'll be interviewing a yak farmer and his herd who are going through some relationship problems. Will the language barrier be too much of a hurdle? Tune in to find out.